Hello YouTube! Today I want to nitpick a movie trilogy The Lord of the Rings. First things first, I just finished watching the whole trilogy and they are awesome. As you probably know, I don't have to tell you this. And as no movie is perfect, the more you watch it, the more you notice things and more you start to nitpick them. I'll start with uh, some of the smaller nitpicks. The first movie starts out a little bit slow and when they are gathered around in the place where elves live, I can't, I can't remember these names, so forgive me. There are a bunch of people elves and only nine is on the Fellowship of the Ring. So it's quite a small number and it, it might be a good thing that it's easier to go undetected when you have a small group of people but four of those don't have any experience fighting and they are, you know, hobbits. Of those nine, uh, Aragorn, the ranger, the dwarf, Gimli, Legolas and uh, Gandalf are my favorites. Those, those four characters are awesome. And so they begin this quest and of course uh, Sean Bean's character Boromir dies. I haven't watched a lot of Sean Bean's movies but he seems to die in every one I watch. And I think the fellowship breaks up way too quickly. It's in the end of the first movie but we have still have two long movies ahead of us so I wish that the fellowship would have stayed together longer. And Aragorn even says to Frodo that he would have stayed with him till the end but he's afraid that he will be tempted by the ring and he will uh, betray Frodo. But what's stopping him and Legolas and uh, Gimli the dwarf from following them from distance? Of course they go after the two other hobbits that were captured. It's okay. No problem with that. And next I want to talk about Aragorn himself. He was best in the first movie and <laughs> these movies were shot back to back to back as, I've, as far as I know. But Aragorn seemed to age like 10 years from the first movie when we first see him until the end. And they say even in the movie that it's it was 30 months since they started their journey. And I liked him be better as a ranger than this heir to the king, Gondor. The Nazgûl's riders were, they were kind of scary. And we don't see them that much after the first movie. And I think that kind of scary and a great fight scene in the first movie. So I wish we could have seen more of them. And in the third movie, the leader of those died quite easily in the hands of a woman. There was no epic battle, so that's another missed opportunity for me. Next up, Gandalf. I preferred him as Gandalf the Grey because he wasn't all that powerful. And at first, when he's Gandalf the White, he doesn't remember his name, he doesn't recognize the people. And he's supposed to be this powerful wizard, but he doesn't really do anything special when a fight is on. So I'm not quite sure what are his powers. Like he fights this fire demon, but he can't do anything special against the orcs. Next up, the ring. As honest trailer said, do, doesn't seem to do anything special. You turn invisible, you became, become basically addicted to him. It's like a, being a, addicted to drugs or something like that. And in the beginning of the first movie, we have the fight scene from 3000 years ago. It didn't seem to do anything special when Sauron had it. I don't get what's the point of that ring, to be honest. Frodo Baggins. He is the one who inherits the one ring from his uncle Bilbo. And it is his duty to destroy the ring. And to be honest, I only liked Frodo in the first movie. I meant to say this in the beginning of the video, but I'm gonna say it now because I just remembered. And that is that it has been years since I've watched 
these movies and I kind of wondered why because these are, these are epic movies and I think the main reason is I just don't like Frodo and the Gollum 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 I don't like them in the last two movies it's not like there's anything special about Frodo and you know that probably makes him like a good hero character but I think Sam, his gardener, was a bigger hero at the end. They make this huge deal about how Frodo is the only one who can, you know, carry the ring. But in the third movie, when Frodo abandons Sam and he believes Colum instead of Sam, who is, has been friends with him forever. And I know that it was the ring that clouded Frodo's judgment or whatever, but still. And so Frodo continues with Colum when he gets captured by the spider and later the orcs. And it is revealed that Sam has been carrying the ring for the, ever since he was abandoned by Frodo. Why couldn't they take turns carrying the ring? Wouldn't that make much more sense? When they are on the Mount Doom, Sam says that I can't carry the ring for you, but I can carry you. Why couldn't he carry the ring? He just do it, did it like half an hour earlier, at least in movie time. And when the creature column attacks them, then uh, Frodo gets this last minute energy or determination that he will destroy the ring. But when he is about to destroy the ring, he decides you know, it's his ring, he's not gonna destroy it. Then the column attacks him and they fight over the ring. The reason why the ring gets destroyed is because Frodo and the creature column fight over it. It's not like Frodo is about to drop it and destroy it and then he's get, he gets attacked. So I don't think that that was heroic at all. And also, at the end of the movie, he leaves the Shire where he has grown up and he lives with the elves to the undying land or whatever it's called. And to be honest, I don't think he really deserved that. <laughs> or maybe he deserved it, but I would have much rather seen him grow old in the sh Shire. And there's the, and he says that, there's, uh, that he can't return to normal in the Shire because he's changed so much. Because he's changed so much. But living with the elves he's away from his people, how's that gonna help? And at the end of the trilogy we see that Aragorn has become the king but I would have liked to see what happens to Legolas and Gimli. At the end credits there's this text that tells what happens but I would have rather seen it. And one last thing popped into my head is that they can't win any of the fights without some outside help and the help always comes like in the 11th hour so like the first or the second time it's cool but when it happens over and over again it gets kind of lame and I just think that couldn't they have come just a little bit earlier and made the fight scene like have a bigger army for the orcs and the eagles show up at the very end of the movie, the last the last movie. These are my nitpicks of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Of the three, I think the first one is my favorite. Between the second and third, I don't know which one is better. Maybe the third one is a little better because you see the ending. But do you have your own nitpicks for this franchise? If you have, comment down below. Thanks for watching and